Welcome to Weight Loss with Plants, brought to you by the T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies. I'm your host, Sharm Ridley. Like many people who struggle with weight issues, our next guest has been overweight pretty much his whole life. After attempting many diets throughout the years, he has finally found tremendous success with a whole food plant-based way of eating. Please welcome Jonathan Fa to the show. Thank you so much for being here, Jonathan. No, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Well, let's just just share with us your history of weight loss issues. Yeah, well, you know, as long as I can remember, I've been overweight. You know, I don't know that there's any photos of me where you wouldn't say that I was overweight, you know, and I grew up being pretty active. You know, I played football. I wrestled from the time that I was in like first grade all the way through high school. And I always kind of was the the biggest kid, you know, like within wrestling, we used to get like grouped up in age groups, you know, first and second graders would wrestle together, third and fourth, fifth and sixth. And every time I was in the older kind of age group, so like when I was in third grade, I'd go to these wrestling tournaments and I would weigh in and they would match everybody up and they'd call me to the front desk and they'd kind of be like, well, you have a few options. You're, you're the biggest kid in your age group by more than 15% of body weight. So we can give you a a trophy for being the heaviest kid there, I guess, in that age group, Uh, you can get your money back. And then I would probably have gone and spent it on candy at the concession stands, or you can wrestle up. And I almost, I always chose to wrestle up, you know? And so being kind of big was just, part of my everyday life, you know, and then after high school, all that activity went away and I really started to put a lot of weight on, you know, there's a few times as an adult where I lost weight, you know, I went on a program for a few months and was able to lose some weight or like in 2007, I was diagnosed with sleep apnea and that made a huge change in my life. Just getting a CPAP machine, losing some weight there. And that's kind of when I met my wife, you know, and then uh, we started trying to have kids. So we lost weight, went to the gym for that. Uh, And really back in 2013 was the last time I really had success losing weight. And I was taking like prescription appetite suppressants, eating a really low calorie diet. And really since then, I didn't give my diet much of a concern after that point. And just really started to balloon up and, you know, I would play around with different dieting things, but nothing ever stuck. Right. Right. What was your highest weight? So the highest weight that I've ever seen is 525 pounds, you know, and that was really, uh, it, it, the first time I saw my weight over 500 pounds, it, it should have been more of a wake up call, but you know, being 525 pounds was definitely, I knew I needed to do something. Now, you were able to kickstart this last round with an unconventional way of losing weight before you started learning about whole food, plant-based dieting, uh, eating. Uh, Tell us about that. Yeah, you know, like I said, I was kind of experimenting with some things, and I had been looking into and, and kind of seeing a lot of information out there about extended water fasting. And so I had been playing around with extended and intermittent water fasting, Uh, and in November of 2020, I kind of decided to just see how far I could push the water fast. And I ended up water fasting for a total of a thousand hours, which ends up being about 42 days. Uh, it's something that it's, uh, it was wild to do. And it it really jumpstarted this whole thing and kind of led to much greater success after the fact. And and so you said that once you did that, you started doing some researching because you realized that's the sort of thing that really should be under doctor supervision. What did right. you discover? Right. So, yeah, I was researching some things and uh, I wanted to learn more about extended fasting. And I ended up finding out about this facility in California called the True North Clinic, and they do medically supervised water fasting. And so I looked into what they do, you know, like what they recommend to their patients. And uh, I found that 
they have these people do these water fasts and they have them eat a whole food plant-based diet with no added salt, oil, or sugar when they get done. And it just was wild to me that this place that was designed for fasting, that that was their goal was to do these water fasts, that this was the diet that they were suggesting their patients eat. Like if they had, you know, I think over 20,000 people that they've had go through their facility and they've gotten all kinds of criticism for what they do. Why would they choose this type of diet? Like they could do keto, paleo, uh, carnivore, you know, ba you know, balance, low calorie. They could have suggested anything, but they were suggesting a whole food plant-based diet. So I started looking into it, you know, and I saw some videos of people that had been at the facility and they were feeling the same way I was feeling at the time, you know, uh, while I was doing the research. And so it just really resonated to, with me. Um, and so I, you know, I was already doing something crazy with this. You know, right. <laughs> well, what are some of the things that you learned that made you realize this is something that was really going to work for you? Uh, you know, with the, I didn't know it was going to work for me. I really, I didn't. I, I went into it a little bit blindly, uh, but I read their book. They have a book called The uh, the Pleasure Trap. It's written by Dr. Lyle and Alan Goldhammer. And that book itself, there's so much that I was in that book that I was um, feeling and realizing that they talk about things like the myth of moderation, you know, the myth of moderate consumption and the, the, uh, myth of moderate change and and they talk about the social aspects and like they in that book you know they deal with things that you know even if you didn't have a plant-based diet it, there's there's social aspects of dieting that you have to deal with and so there there was a lot of helpful things in that book i was i was a big fan of it yeah tell us about the beginning weeks your beginning weeks of your transition yeah, you know, the transition for me was probably a little bit more difficult than it was for my wife because we kind of, she didn't do the water fasting, but when I came home and was like, you know, let's try this whole food plant-based diet, my wife was like, really, she just wanted to see me lose weight because she wanted me to live longer. And so she was like, we'll do whatever you want. And, um, but for the first couple of weeks, uh, it was difficult because for me, like I didn't really eat vegetables before. If I ever had a vegetable before it was on things like a Supreme pizza, or it was like, it was because it was too difficult to take off the sandwich when they gave it to me and I just left it on there. Um, and so, uh, it took a couple weeks though, but then it was like, there was this switch one night at dinner. I was eating a meal that we had had a couple times already. It was a mega veggie chili is what it's called. And I just realized how much I was enjoying the flavor and the texture and just that was getting, I was so satisfied with it. And I even said something to my wife at the time. I was like, I know you've made this before, but this is so much better now than it was the first time I had it a couple of weeks ago. And I attribute that kind of to a couple different things. You know, one, my taste bud preferences change. They absolutely change. You know, there's foods I would never eat cucumber before. I wouldn't even consider eating a cucumber before. I loved pickles, wouldn't eat cucumbers. Um, and now it's my favorite part of the salads that we have is the, the cucumbers, you know. Um, but also, you know, our ability to cook the food's gotten better. Like, because for 30 five plus years, you know, we've been preparing food one way or eating certain types of foods. So it is all brand new. You know, there's still things that we make that I just have no idea how Carrie makes it, but it's great, you know? Um, and then, you know, we found foods that we liked, uh, you know, right. it's probably slowed down my weight loss, but I didn't know I love avocado toast. And, you give me avocado toast with some pico de gallo on it, and that's my favorite snack. And I didn't know that for the first six months of this diet, you know. So you find the foods you like. Right. How do you handle uh, this way of eating outside of the house? It's it, That's even more difficult, you know. And I think the biggest part of that is being prepared. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's funny. The first couple times we went out to eat, 
we'd go to a restaurant and we'd look at their salads and we'd be like, okay, well, we're going to get the Asian salad, but we're going to get it without the cheese and out the dressing and without this. And then they hand you a $12 bowl of lettuce and you're just kind of like, what did I just buy? You know? And so you, you, I found that like, if we're going to a restaurant where we're not choosing what to, to eat, uh, a lot of times I'll kind of eat a little bit beforehand at home, but then at the restaurant, just looking at like the sides, baked potatoes, steamed vegetables, uh, fruit cups. Those are all kind of, uh, simple things you can get. So you're at least getting some food, you, you know, you might get looked at a little bit funny, but, um, it's, you know, if you're there for the social aspect more than the food aspect that some, you know, with some of that, uh, but right. we, and- yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, But I was just going to say like, but when we get to choose where we eat, we really only look at restaurants now that are either exclusively vegan or they have vegan options. You know, there's an app out there called happy cow that has every restaurant and they even have like the, you can get the salad and get these ingredients to make it vegan on that app. But, but um, it's just easier for us to not, you know, cause I want to, I want, when I order something, I want to get what they wanted me to have, you know, like there's a vegan restaurant we went to that had this autumn squash thing that was just amazing. Like that I never would have had before, but, uh, uh, it, I was able to order it the way they wanted, you know, the, the way they were intending it to be eaten. Exactly. And, and where are you now on your weight loss journey? So, Tell us about your progress. Right. So when I kind of, this whole thing, I, I started uh, a YouTube channel called Fa Dieting. And it was really just going to be a video journal of me trying to lose weight. When I started, I had no intention of eating a plant-based diet, but now that's really all I talk about on there. Um, but I gave myself two main goals. And the two main goals were that I needed to stick with something longer than I've ever stuck with anything in concern or in relation to my weight loss. So even if I went through 12 different diets, I was going to stick with this for three years. And then the other thing is that I had a lot of weight to lose in the past. I've been able to lose weight for three months or six months, you know, and get down 50 pounds or even lose as much as a hundred pounds, over a hundred pounds in the past, but it was never, maintained. I never figured out, you know, a way to sustain that weight loss or to, to maintain that. And so, um, this time I challenged myself to lose more weight than I've ever challenged myself. And so I challenged myself to lose 300 pounds. And right now I'm kind of just over a year in and at about 200 pounds loss. So I like to say I'm halfway, Wow! Um, but, uh, it's, the time thing is something that's really changed in my mind too, is that this is a lifestyle change. I'm going to be eating this way the rest of my life. And I would love to get down to 220 pounds and I I don't have any doubt that I will. And, and I actually think, you know, I have more thoughts of getting under 200 pounds now, you know, like to, to lose over 320 pounds would be amazing. So. Yeah. You once said something that I think will really resonate with a lot of people. You said that you had to figure out how a 220 pound person ate in order for you to be successful. Expand expand on that. Yeah. You know, I always thought that my problem was that I just had this overactive appetite or that I just had portion control issues, you know, And, you know, like when I would go to get fast food, I wouldn't just order the number five and maybe large size it. I'd get the number five large sized with another sandwich and a side of onion rings on top of that. And so I always thought that, you know, like if I could just figure out how to just go and get one value meal and and eat that way, that I would end up losing weight eventually. And what I didn't realize at the time is how important the calorie density of the food that we eat is, you know, I've learned now that we eat more based on volume, you know, we eat three to five pounds of food a day. That's what our body wants us to eat is a volume of food. And I was eating 
at least that volume, three to five pounds. But when it was averaging 1500 calories per pound, then I'm eating five, 7,000 calories a day. Now, if I can eat between 500 and 700 calories a pound, then I'm eating between, you know, 1500 and 3,500 calories at the high end. And when I stay in that range, I'm losing weight, you know, and, and I'm eating, I'm, I'm so satisfied. I go to bed every single night with a full stomach. I'm not sitting here eating just these little portions of food. You know, the salads that we make are mixing bowl size salads that we eat now. And so it's, it's been a huge change when I focus more on calorie density than than, uh, right. T- tell food. us a little bit more about some of the things that y'all eat, some of the things that your wife makes for you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mentioned the avocado toast. Uh, I, I uh, love making that. Um, every day, it, it seems like it would be boring, but every morning we really have the same breakfast. It's, it's oat groats or steel cut oats with bananas and apples and just it seems like it would it it be, would get repetitive, but it's extremely satisfying every morning, and it fills my stomach. And then in the evenings, we've had so many new things. You know, uh, like I just mentioned, a big bowl of salad is what we had two nights ago. Uh, miso soup has really been one of my favorite things. Chickpea tikka masala is another thing that we uh, have probably once a week. Um, uh, mega veggie chili, you know, and there's so many resources out there. There's so many places that you can find recipes. And a lot of these recipes that we eat now aren't direct copies from what we found. You know, we took that recipe and said, oh, you know, this is a little too spicy for us. Maybe let's take out some of that spicy Rotel tomato, or maybe this isn't spicy enough. Let's add more of this cayenne powder to it, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's lots of big bowls, you know, of of rice and beans and things like that. It's yeah. It's, Tell us some things that um, that you've been able to do that you were not able to do before with your family and you know, especially oh, yeah. with your kids and so on. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of things. Uh, you know, the biggest thing that I did from a personal standpoint this past year is I ran uh, what's called a sprint triathlon. And so in, you know, I guess it's been five, six months ago now even, but I did a, it was a 400 meter swim, a 15 mile bike ride and a 5k run walk, I guess uh, for me. Uh, but I was able to do that. I mean, it was two hours of an endurance event that I was able to complete. That's something that I never would have been able to do before. I mean, just going up and down the the steps, uh, you know, not getting winded has improved, you know. Um, we've gone hiking a lot with the kids and just being outdoor. I, I went sledding the other day, just something as silly as going sledding at 500 and 20 pounds that wasn't, you know, you might slide down the hill once and walk back up the hill one time, but that was about all I would have been able to do in the past. Is there anything you're looking forward to doing as you continue to progress in your weight loss? Yeah. You know, um, I really enjoyed hiking with the kids and doing those outdoor outdoor activities with them. Uh, I, I always love traveling with my wife, you know, and being that heavy and getting on a plane is difficult. Uh, I used to ATV all over the country and, uh, but really for me, the thing I'm really looking forward to the most is watching my kids grow up, you know, and get married and have kids of their own. You know, I, I look back at this past year and how much my life has changed. And I realize how many years I've put on the end of my life, you know, not just, you know, you know, cause at any point now, like, even if somebody went and called up, you know, a friend of mine and said, Hey, did you hear John had a heart attack? Nobody would have been surprised. Nobody would have been like, Oh yeah. You know that, you know, everybody been like, yeah, that was kind of what we expected to happen to John. You know, I mean, he's, he's about 40. It's about the time, you know? So I really feel like I've, you know, 
I'd, I'd say I turned an end of life crisis into a midlife crisis. Like I was, I was really close to having some major health issues. And, and so I'm really looking forward to the years that I've added. How, how have your uh, children reacted to this whole change in you? You know, it's been interesting for them. You know, they've definitely seen an improvement. You know, I'm more active. I get them out doing more things. I'm able to maybe play around more. Like I always thought I was a fun, playful dad, but um, I definitely am able to do those things a lot easier. Um, They maybe don't absolutely love it because when we first started with this way of eating, it was definitely for our own health. It was for me and for, for my wife's health. And we still fed our kids a lot of the same foods we used to feed them. And then over the past year, we've kind of transitioned our kids to eating more of a plant-based diet. You know, I mean, they would, I would say that they eat a vegan diet. They do have some processed foods. So they've had to adjust to that. You know, there's a lot of walking through grocery stores and my little five-year-old being like, Hey dad, is that vegan? Is that vegan? Is that vegan? And I'm kind of like, you don't have to yell. Is that vegan as we're walking through the store, but no, it's not, you can't have that. Uh, And so it's been a little bit of an adjustment for them, but they're learning and, and they see how much our health has improved. They know that it makes a difference. Yeah. Well, that's, that's wonderful. Well, listen, for people who find themselves in a situation where they have a lot of weight to lose, what are some things that you can say to them? Uh, You know, I mean, the first thing I have to say is you got to get started, you know, like that's the, the, there's, uh, I always tell people while my live streams, you know, there's, there's nothing coming up that's more important than your health. You don't have an event this weekend that's more important than your health. And what happens next year when that event comes up? Like if you're on a diet and you're doing good, are you going to go off your diet next year when you have that birthday or when that thing comes up? And so really getting started right now is extremely important. There's never anybody that gets to their goal and looks back and says, man, I'm so happy. I waited till after Christmas to start, you know, that everybody looks back and they say, man, if I, w- if I'd have known how I was going to feel, I would have started this a year earlier. You know, like I, I think about if I would have started even two weeks earlier, I'd be two pounds lighter now, you know, like, um, and then also, you know, continue your education. Uh, I constantly am reading up on a plant-based diet. There's all kinds of information coming out every day. There's new movies, there's new books. You know, I, some of the books that I've read, you know, I mentioned the pleasure trap, eat to live plant-based athlete. Uh, the, uh, T Colin Campbell, uh, whole is a great book. I loved reading that. I just got done reading a book called Fiber Fueled by Will Bolshewitz. And this is all, you know, the great thing about like that Fiber Fuel book is that that is brand new information that they're talking about. Like 25 years ago, they weren't talking about gut microbiome and the, the, how the food you eat affects that, you know? And so definitely continue, um, with your, your education. Um, and just don't be afraid to do it. You know, your body is amazing. It can do amazing things. It's, it's designed to adapt, you know, and it it takes time for it to adapt. But if you're confident that your body has the ability to change, you know, you just remove the temptations and you'll be amazed at how quickly, you know, you you'll start to respond to this way of eating. Well, Jonathan, the words that you've said, I am certain will be an inspiration to other people. This is amazing. Your journey is amazing. And I just uh, wish you so much success in the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time to interview me. And I hope that uh, people, uh, you know, are able to find their inspiration in, in something, you know, but, but give it a shot. It's worth it. It really is.